Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, February 10th, and Lucas County teachers are preparing to get their coronavirus vaccine this weekend, and Ohio's coronavirus curfew could be gone as early as tomorrow. So I have more on all of that and all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But I don't know about you all, but I have been chilled to the bone today, and that cold isn't going anywhere anytime soon. But don't take it from me. Why don't you hear it firsthand from our first alert meteorologist. Hourly forecast shows you the best chance for snow today. Well, that is going to be to the south of Toledo. So let's say BG and Wood County all the way down through Finley on off to Ottawa. Uh, best chance for some light snow into the afternoon. Folks out towards Tiffin, Bucyrus, Upper Sandusky could pick out a few snow showers as well. Snow should taper off by about 8 to 9 o'clock p.m. Maybe the chance for a light dusting of accumulation, but nothing real widespread or heavy whatsoever. And folks in Toledo and Lucas County probably going to stay dry, other than the exception of a stray flurry. Advancing the clock into your Thursday, the chill continues. It is going to be another cool day, mostly cloudy skies. You will notice, especially by the afternoon, cloud cover is starting to thicken up a little bit. So another gray and gloomy day. Best chance to see some sunshine tomorrow. That's going to come in the morning hours, because by the afternoon, all this gray shows you, well, another cold and overcast one. The breeze should be fairly calm tomorrow, though, so again, the wind chill not too big of a factor. Next chance for any sort of widespread snowfall. Well, look, look at our first alert weekend forecast. Saturday snow is looking likely. A few of those snow flurries could continue into Valentine's Day. Again, first alert days for both of those turning breezy on Sunday. It is going to be windy and cold. This could be the chilliest one we've had in this stretch of weather. Temperatures only making it into the mid teens. And the man accused of shooting three children Friday, killing two, was indicted this morning on two counts of aggravated murder, one count of attempt to commit aggravated murder, and two counts of felonious assault. Kevin Moore is suspected of shooting and killing five-year-old Amir and one-year-old Gabriel Phillips and critically injuring their four-year-old brother Ashton at the Burnport apartment complex. Moore was arraigned Monday morning and is being held on two $2 million bonds for each count of murder and one $1 million bond for the felonious assault count. If he is bonded out, Moore will be required to wear an ankle bracelet and have no contact with the family of the children. His next appearance in court will be a preliminary hearing scheduled for Friday. And like I said, this weekend, Lucas County school staff and teachers will be getting their coronavirus vaccines. But today, superintendents had their chance at the Lucas County Rec Center. The health department has a target of vaccinating about 8,000 K-12 school personnel within a two-day period. So this big vaccination event in Lucas County is scheduled for Friday and Saturday at the University of Toledo ROTC Hall. Now, if you do work for a Lucas County school and you do plan to get a vaccine, here are some do's and don'ts. And again, this information is relevant just for school staff. Do not use public sign-up links and do not call 211 for scheduling. Instructions will come to staff from their school administrators through an email that walks you through how to schedule. But do contact your school administrators if you have questions. Some situations they can help with are if you're not available during vaccination times, if you couldn't get an appointment this week, or if you weren't included in the initial eligible list. Now, if you have more questions about this process, don't worry, the health department is holding a press conference tomorrow at 11 a.m. with an update on what's ahead this weekend and the plan heading into next week. You can watch it live on WTOL.com and on the WTOL Facebook page. And as a heads up, the statewide coronavirus curfew in Ohio could be gone tomorrow as long as current trends continue. The current curfew starts at 11 p.m. each night, but state leaders have been looking at Ohio's total number of COVID positive patients each day. And DeWine previously said if those numbers stay below 3,000 for seven straight days, the curfew would go to midnight. And if they are below 2,500 for a week straight, the curfew would be gone. Well, Ohio's been on track with the numbers below 2,500 for more than the week requirement. So Governor DeWine is expected to address the statewide curfew tomorrow during his regular coronavirus press conference. So we will, of course, have that streaming on air and online, and we'll keep you updated every step of the way. And that trend is being reflected nationally. The number of those hospitalized with COVID-19 in the U.S. dropped to its lowest level nearly three months yesterday. The U.S. also recorded its first two consecutive days of less than 100,000 new cases since the end of October. But despite that good news, health experts remain concerned about more contagious variants of the virus, which may reverse the trend as Americans await their chance at a vaccine. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky reportedly said Monday that despite the downward trend, virus variants from overseas, which have arrived in the U.S. and are more contagious, are a problem. For instance, the variant from South Africa has shown to infect people who have already survived the original form of the virus. Walensky urged people to continue following guidelines set months ago, like wearing masks, 
staying socially distant, avoiding crowds and poorly ventilated areas, and getting vaccinated as soon as it becomes available to you. There have now been more than 27 million confirmed cases of coronavirus in the U.S. and 468,103 deaths since the start of the pandemic. And today marked day two of the second Senate impeachment trial against former President Donald Trump. The former president is facing a sole charge of incitement of insurrection. So here's a quick look at the schedule. Each side has up to 16 hours to make their case, spanning across two days, starting with the prosecution. Then Friday and Saturday, we will likely start hearing from the defense. After presentations conclude, senators will have four hours to question the two sides. After questioning, if the House impeachment managers request to call any witnesses, there will be four hours of debate, followed by a vote on whether or not they should call those witnesses. Then there are closing arguments. House impeachment managers and the former president's counsel will be given up to four hours, equally divided, for closing arguments. And after that, of course, the Senate will vote on the article of impeachment. Opening the first full day of arguments, the lead House prosecutor said they would lay out evidence that shows the president encouraged a rally crowd to head to the Capitol and then did nothing to stem the violence and watched with, quote, glee as a mob stormed the Capitol building, an event which ultimately led to the death of five people. Impeachment managers showed excerpts from Trump's speeches where the former president told supporters the only way he could lose is if the election results were rigged. The effort to challenge the results then continued after the election, with Trump telling his supporters the election had been stolen and that they shouldn't accept these results. Impeachment managers also pushed back at the defense team's arguments that Trump's words were protected by the First Amendment. They said the case was not about protected political speech, but rather about Trump's incitement of violence. Again, the prosecution has another day to present before we then start hearing from former President Trump's counsel. And before I go, I want to look at something fun. Now, I know by now all of you have probably already seen this, but it never gets old. So a lawyer accidentally left a kitten filter on during a Zoom video conference with a judge and he could not get it off. I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live, but it's not, I'm not a cat. I'm not a cat, he says. Honestly, I think the poor guy handled it pretty well. And really, I think we should keep those cat filters. How can you say no to anything that Southern Kitten says? But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.